Thank you, Vincent, for the introduction. I'm happy to be here today to talk to you all about sustainable mobility and specifically about the potential impact of short distance mobility in our cities. So I'm excited to say, I think the time has finally come. It's projected now that in these next 10 years until 2030, we shall see more disruption in the field of mobility than we did in the previous 100. And those of us who are working in the industry and the startups and the investors, as well as the cities and all of us who use mobility are all trying to figure out what exactly will be the timing, the volume and the impact of these new innovations. But I always like to address the skeptics and actually there still are plenty of skeptics out there today who tend to ask, hey, um, the car, it's comfortable, it's convenient, it takes me when and where I want. And if we look at what happened with COVID, we also see there was a shift from public transport back to the private car again. And people ask the question, you know, now we have electric mobility, is there still a need to think beyond the car? And of course, the answer is yes. As you know, and all of us know who are working in the area, congestion is just one part of the topic. But in addition, cars in our cities lead to just um, congestion and noise um, and the continuous demand of more space. Um, there's a really interesting article called The Arrogance of Space, which talks about the urban planning and how each car that travels through our city requires about 140 square meters of space. That's more space than what I could show you where I'm sitting right now in my apartment that I share with my family of four. We know from the World Bank that before COVID, around 1 million people were moving to our cities every week. So I want to, before I go on to talk about mobility, I want to talk a little bit more about cities. Did you know that cities today represent just 2% of the Earth's crust? Yet more than 50% of the population is living in our cities. And again, according to the World Bank, by 2030, so 10 years from now or less than, 70% might be living in our cities. 75% of the energy that's consumed is being consumed in our cities. And 80% of our greenhouse gases that are emitted are from our cities. What this means is it's an opportunity when we can design new innovative mobility solutions for our cities, we have an enormous lever to create change, climate change. So some good news. Um, electric mobility finally seems to be here, right? So in the first five years, it took um, five years to sell the first 1 million electric vehicles. In 2019, it happened in less than six months. When you look at 2019 to 2020, it was a three and a half fold increase in sales in Europe. It went from 3% electric vehicle sales to 10 and a half percent. If you're watching the news and reading them just as much as I am, you'll see all the flurry of announcements from all the automakers. There's commitment. If everything were to come true, it would actually mean around 400 new electric vehicle models available on the market by 2025 and 25 million electric vehicles in sales. So this is all great news. However, electric mobility alone is not enough. And that's why. This is why I think we will see this evolution of mobility in a much different way. We don't just have electric mobility, we have new technologies such as autonomous, such as connect, connected car. We have new form factors, which you'll see as some of them from the companies that um, we've invested in like Ono, um, for example, or Scubic. But then you have the societal or behavioral changes that we've seen from the sharing economy or just a, a renewed focus on sustainability. And it will be the convergence of these technology trends that really create the impact that we want to see. And I'll give you an example. Um, the next slide I'm going to show you is something that we did together. I did together with MIT and we took a lot of different data to see how people are moving in our cities and how we could connect these uh, trips that people take. So this is New York City. This is representing 170 million taxi trips, which is done in one year. 
in New York City. And what we show here is you'll see the pickups in yellow and the drop-offs in blue. And we built an algorithm to say, okay, if we can combine two people in one taxi, whereby each person is only delayed two to five minutes um, on the whole trip, how many of those taxi trips could then be shared? And the end result was that with a delay of only two to five minutes per trip, 95% of the taxi trips, this 170 million trips could be shared, which means that 40% of the trips are no longer needed. And that's the beauty of combining um, data, connectivity, together with sharing, connected then also with electric mobility. But what I wanted to talk a little bit more about today is what's happening outside of this with, with micromobility and last mile logistics. So I know everyone's probably sitting somewhere um, in a different city right now, but hopefully you can all relate a little bit to this, uh, this um, drawing. It, in the orange circles, you'll see what we have in a lot of cities, which is cars just parked on the sidewalk or maybe parked on a parking spot. Then you have in the blue, if you are on a bike or you're walking or you're trying to eat, there's just very little space today for people not in a car. And if you're trying to find a micromobility solution in yellow, you have the situation of the, the, the lady in the middle where it's just not meeting her use case. She has groceries or a kid or the one in the bottom where the vehicle is actually broken or the one in the top where you're located somewhere and there is no vehicle nearby or the one on the left where maybe it's just the hassle of having to download another app on your phone. So it's just not working. These are the challenges, but let me show you what the opportunity is. And, and maybe many of you are familiar with this number, but more than 60% of all the kilometers traveled in our city are less than eight kilometers, which means that a trip that's less than eight kilometers can most likely be done with a vehicle that's not a car. And when we look at just what the impact could be, if we take the CO2 life cycle, you change from an internal combustion engine to an electric vehicle, that's great. You get twice the um, savings in CO2 life cycle. But when you would go to a sco scooter, that's 7.4 to 12 scooters are equivalent then to two cars. And of course, the space as well. So switching from an ICE to an electric car takes up the same amount of space. But when you expand that then to a different form factor, you're creating a lot more space that we didn't have before. So obviously, there's some potential here. So a couple months ago, I started to look at this whole topic and say, okay, what would need to be done? What would be the technologies? Who are the players? How do we fix this so that short distance mobility in our cities is creating the impact that we wanted to have? But before doing that, I thought, I better calculate what the impact could be. What would be the impact of getting rid of some of these cars in our cities and replacing them with light electric vehicles. So what I did is I took the, the numbers, I, I looked at over um, the cities in, in Europe that are over 300,000 people. I looked at um, how many kilometers are traveled, all the trips and made some assumptions. And today shared micromobility is only 0.1% of all the trips. According to the different studies out there, it's anticipated that it could go up to maybe 15%. I use something more conservative than that. So yeah, something um, less than that to say, okay, if those trips were now done not by a car, but by a light electric vehicle, what would be the impact? And here, here's what I found. So in terms of CO2, it would be 30.7 million tons of CO2 that could be saved and um, also energy savings. Just to give you a context, that tons of CO2 is about 12.5% of the German um, uh, CO2 production per year. And Germany is the largest energy, um, CO2 producer in Europe. When you look over at jobs, it's about 1 million direct and indirect jobs that could be created in making the vehicles and the battery and the supply chain of, of bringing those different vehicles into the ecosystem. And the auto industry today is about 13.8 million jobs. So this is a significant number. 
all the time that we spend in traffic, if you look at the INRICS reports or TomTom, Tom, you see there's a lot of time that we're all spending in traffic. If we can reduce the amount of time that we're sitting in congestion, there's an actual value for that, which is calculated into a GDP increase. And so over 100 billion uh, euros could be realized um, just by getting people not to have to sit in traffic. And lastly, um, a lot of space could be freed up. So it's almost about four times the amount of Paris, which could be freed up in terms of not dedicating so much space to cars. At Inno Energy, um, we are investing in this topic. It's, it's a real key topic to us. And I just gave a, an example of what we have in terms of some of the investments in this space. But what we're looking for now is if you go to the bottom left, we know we need to focus on, um, from a technology standpoint, better purpose-built modular sustainable vehicles that are using recycled materials that are being produced locally that have higher serviceability so that you can also get the unit economics to work out with the business model. Um, in the beginning with some of the micromobility vehicles, they were actually only lasting one to two, two months. Another part that we're focused on is providing and make sure, make sure, making sure we provide clean energy for those vehicles. And that should be battery as a service or energy as a service and a focus on the swappable battery infrastructure as well. And lastly, we definitely need to have um, some software in there. So the efficient operation and the redistribution of vehicles to make sure that all fits. And then at the same time, and we talked about this uh, a little bit already, it needs to be seamless for the end customers. There needs to be attractive business models. So mobility as a service or subscription, and we need to see the part on the city side. And we already saw with respect to improving the city infrastructure, since COVID, there's been 70 plus new city initiatives to, to open up the bike lanes and, and create more space. So in closing, this is kind of a picture that um, I could imagine our cities would look like, more green space, more, um, more lanes for purpose-built vehicles, et cetera, and more people just in general. And I hope um, you're familiar with the picture from 1900 and 1913, where they went from all horses to all cars. And in 1913, they played the game of, can you find the one horse? in that time frame, And I'm hoping that in the next 10 years, we'll go from this picture to playing the game, can you find the one internal combustion engine in our cities? That's my hope or my vision. So with that, I say thank you. And I turn it back over to Vincent.